Welcome back to an instant reaction edition of the Night Report podcast. I'm your co-host, Mike Broadbent. Joining me once again is my co-host, Richie Snegre and Craig Epstein. Guys, we got a commitment from the class of 2023 in basketball. Bay Ndongo, he is a, he's, I think he's from Colorado Prep. He's a 6'8 or 6'9. Uh, let's just call him a four because I think there's a little bit of a, Fair enough. not confusion, but a little bit of discourse about what he is. I think he's a modern center He's a four. He could maybe be a wing, but he is a guy who has been rocketing up boards. Um, he, Rutgers finished, uh, or Rutgers landed him as top five was Michigan, Nebraska, San Diego, Rutgers, and one other school. I think Miami, um, Colorado. Colorado. That would make sense. Uh, this is a kid who emerged as one of the top targets for the class of 2023 for Rutgers. Um, this is also a kid who will see his ranking shoot up dramatically in the next update, but I'll let you get into that. Richie, tell mm -hmm. us a little bit about what we're getting in Bain Dongo. Yeah, so he's interesting. So he dropped the top 10, I want to say August, I think it was, uh, had Rutgers, and then all of a sudden, like, they made the top five, and it's like they just started – Rutgers was pushing, but they weren't pushing too hard because you're still trying to figure out where you stand with him, so you don't want to waste a ton of resources. But then they got the top five, and they're like, all right, full out, all out push. This kid's, like, legit. Uh, he is a little bit of a project, and I say that in a good way. He's a very good project, per se. I'm like kind of like a Wolfolk type, where uh, he, he's got to learn the game a little bit more. He's got to add strength. He's got to add muscle. Uh, he's real thin, so, I mean, that's that's the biggest thing. But uh, Steve Peichel got his bay. That was a good one. <laughs> I've been sitting on that since you started. Oh, God. Uh, <laughs> found his bay, I should have said. Uh, but, no, he's, he's this really solid player. I know there's been some controversy because every site has him at a different height. Um, I did find the AAU stats where they, they uh, measure and weigh every kid before the, the big tournament events. So this is from June, mind you, but he was 6'9 in June. So 6'9", okay. 187. And it's like, okay, that's, that's, that's pretty thin. But uh, he's really lengthy. He's a great defender. Um, obviously checks all the boxes that Pike loves in terms of rebounding. And he gets a lot of steals, too, I've noticed on his tape. Um, so that's always cool. That's that's. Great for a big man. So he's got good hands, great motor. Um, just a typical Pykele type dude. He plays hard on every possession. He really – and he runs the floor well too. So I don't want to compare his skill set to Cliff too much because he does have more of an offensive game than Cliff did out of high school. So there's that. Uh, he can hit the mid-range. He can hit the three from time to time. Uh, I think this is a really good get. And like you said, like you mentioned before, he's going to see a rankings boost, I'm told. Like they want to put him in like – top 50 like maybe not the end of the top 50 which isn't like top 150 yeah top 150 in the country like 150 yeah. people in the recruits in this country in this class and he's in that that's going to add with griffiths who's number 30 and it's probably going to see a boost as well because they, everyone fucking loves the kid and uh, uh under the radar guy is michael davis who's also he's going to be probably stay at the three-star status but they're just a very good class and i don't know if they're done yet but we could talk about that later but this kid is this is a great get he's a project but a very good project at that. How much playing time do you think he would get early on? It's going to be weird because he plays like a three slash four slash sometimes like a small a small lineup five. Uh, he's good, so he'll get some time. I think he'll probably fill in like that. Uh, I don't know. It actually really depends on the roster, to be honest, next year. Because yeah. Chol, Chol's kind of like that four slash five role also. Uh, Griffiths is like a three slash four role. He'll probably, he can dribble the ball really well. So Griffiths will probably play more of a three. I'm thinking, um, they're going to have a tall, lengthy ass lineup, no matter what, <laughs> like it's, you're going to have Paul who's six, seven point point guard, six, eight, maybe, uh, you'll have Cam Spencer next year. You'll have the three will probably be Griffiths if I had to guess. And then the four role would be a mag who could go three, four. It's, it's just such a position to basketball now. Like all these guys can play multiple stuff. Multiple spots. Um, the Dangu, he'll probably be like in that eighth, ninth man. Like, it wouldn't even shock me if he redshirted, to be honest. Uh, depending on what the what the roster looks like, we don't know if Cliff comes back or not, so that's going to play a role there too. Um, he can play three, four, or five. Like, he's lengthy, he's quick, he's fast. See what he looks like when he puts on a little bit more muscle. He'll obviously just get better and better, in my opinion. But uh, yeah, I, I don't really know yet. That's it, that's a, it's a good question. Minute wise, it's so hard to predict these things. Mm -hmm. I just really like, I think I really like the direction this they're really going with these recruits. It feels like now they're 
they're getting it might like you say he's six nine he's not maybe he's not a seven foot guy but he's just super athletic and you can see with the big ten i think baby steps are kind of moving more in that direction where you know you don't have to have that like zach Eady is still great nothing and nothing against zach Eady, but i mean that kind of style is kind of kind of fading away a little bit and you're seeing more and more athletic guys like the cliffs and maybe one day the nadongos where they might not be well, so Cliff is seven feet tall, but you know, just because, it, like, like I see Richie you're on the forum, you're all the time you're talking about. It. It's like seven feet doesn't automatically result in you being like a top flight center. Like there are under un, undersized guys, six nine, six ten, who are super athletic and and can play the fives, which is kind of the direction he's like Marcus is going. And so, like you said, they're getting very feels like they're getting very lengthy, very athletic, and very positionless, which I think is as you see in this season is giving to other teams in the Big Ten fits because it's like. How how are we mm-hmm. supposed to like how we like play against guys like this? It's just so just so different from what they're used to. So assuming he kind of assuming he kind of fits that Pikele mode with the defense and everything, it's like I can imagine maybe not year one he he would be like that type of guy, but I could see him fitting this team like a glove sooner rather than later. Yeah, no, you you said it. Like it's a, it's all undersized centers now. Like yeah, the Kofi Coburns are still going to dominate once in a while, but where's Kofi Coburn right now? He didn't exactly there. like he didn't make the league. I don't even know if he's in the league, is he? I think he's in the G League, but I don't think he's doing much because I haven't heard a single like you know what's surprising. I think Luca, Luca Garza is actually playing pretty well in the right yeah, he's, he's starting that to get kind of significant minutes. Well, that, that, their lineup's weird too, they have two seven footers, yeah. Um, but like, if you look at like one of the best centers in the league, Bam out of bio is six nine, and that might be a generous six nine, and he's <laughs> been phenomenal. Draymond Green plays center at six six, like. Uh, Montrezl Harrell plays center. He's six seven. Like Daniel Tice is six eight. Like these guys are all starting centers and or starting caliber centers in NBA, and they're not seven foot. A seven foot center can work from time to time because you'll get guys like Joel Embiid that can shoot and score from anywhere. But it's starting to like die a little bit. Like these shorter centers are. It's not an issue. Like everyone's like, well, folks on a center, and I'm like, dude, no. He's look at his body type. Look at the way mm-hmm. he plays. His play style. The center. I hate to tell you this. He's your guy next year when Cliff's not there. Or the next year after that, maybe. Yeah, Kofi, Kofi Coburn is currently playing in the Japanese B League, not oh, the wow. B level league, but that's that's the top league in Japan. So he is, is that not the one that playing. Dwight's in. No, Dwight's playing in the CBA, the Chinese oh, basketball the Chinese association. Okay. Gotcha. Um, so yeah, there's just not really a. And I think the same thing is going to happen for Zach Eady. There's not really a place in the NBA for you know big, slow giants. You have to have more than that, like. Like Zach Eady, he's huge, and he's going to be able to like block, you know, six two guards in the Big Ten out. But that's just mm-hmm. not something that the NBA values anymore. It like used Taco to be. Fall, like he's like seven six, and he could never get off the bench. Yeah, you, I mean, if you look at a guy like Taco Fall compared to like Bull Bull, Bull Bull works in the NBA because he he brings so much more to the 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 floor than being tall. Like he can handle the ball. He has an okay shot. But you you have different tools other than just being tall. Like like the modern perfect specimen is like a guy like Victor Wabanyama, who's seven four, can shoot like KD. He can block mm-hmm. shots like you know uh, like Rudy Gobert. Like he is that is the kind of skill set. Like the taller the better, but you have to be able to do things other than just be tall. Um, yeah, you kind of alluded to maybe not being done in twenty twenty three, Richie. What are you hearing for the rest of the class? Yeah, so um, they clearly, if Cliff leaves, it's it's a weird situation now because now you gotta you don't have a scholarship. I mean, you don't even have a scholarship for this kid technically. So someone's got to either transfer out or uh, not use their last year of eligibility. Whether that be Paul just saying, "Hey, I'm done with hoops," whether that be Cliff going to the NBA, whether that be someone else on the end of the bench taking a transfer and just going somewhere lower, I guess. Uh, but they are still they're still monitoring two guys. They did host Emmanuel Unbull. I think I pronounced that correct. I might be wrong. I don't pronounce anything incorrect. Um, <laughs> so he was on campus, uh, what was it, last week? What game was that? I don't even remember at this point. I'm losing track of time. I think, he was, I think he was at Maryland, yeah. Maryland game. So he was at on campus for the Maryland game. They're monitoring him. He's like a little bit of a, a lower on their board type project, but they are keeping a close tabs on him. Obviously, he visited. Uh, I'll have an article on him soon. I think I forgot to post it extra. I have it saved, but... Uh, besides the point, he didn't say a whole lot. It was just more of uh, him being interested in Rutgers. He has no other visits planned. Seton Hall is the only other school that was after him. But uh, like I said, he's a little lower on the board. Number one target for big man would be Juice Lombodo, who they're still trying to like, trying to figure some stuff out off the court and figure out uh, transcripts and stuff like that. So we'll see what happens in that regard. 
Uh, I know they do want to get him on campus for a game. He, I'd argue he's probably target number one in terms of big man, and he's probably your true seven-foot big man. He's a, he's a little different, too. He hasn't played a whole lot at, Sel- at SoCal Academy because he was behind so many other uh, D1 guys last year. But this year he's starting to get uh, a lot more playing time, and he's starting to show a, a nice development, and uh, he could be your center in the future. But it's still it's, it's more of a waiting game. You kind of wait and see what Cliff does. and If Cliff starts going off like over the next month or two, that might be it. That might be Cliff in the late first round, second round, mid second round, something like that uh, type range, and that's it. Like you'll probably, it's hard to say no to the league if you're draftable. Like we're probably going to be honest. I know people are like, yeah, but he's second round pick, and I'm like, yeah, but he can get instead of focusing on basketball. I don't know, like sixty percent of your time. Once you get to the league, it's a hundred percent. That's it. Hoops, 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 hoops. You get NBA coaches. Mm-hmm. And I, I'll say this, and it's not like a knock on Pike or anything, but NBA, even G League level coaches are are next level. Like it's the next level of hoops. They're still top tier. Look at the what's the what's the guy Nick something from uh, the Toronto Raptors? He was G League Coach of the Year. Oh, you won it. Yeah, and then he won an NBA chip. Like the, yeah, it's the, just the, I don't even think coach that, like, yeah, like, I don't think it's a knock. It's just you just learn different aspects. Like obviously, Pykele's <laughs> method is you learn defense, defense, defense. That's kind of probably mm-hmm. that's probably the first thing you learn: rebounding, everything. NBA is different. It's like you can tell, like the guy, the way these guys shoot. It's probably shooting, 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 it's, offensive game, that type of thing. So it's well, like they, you put they the two taught, together. They talk with a bunch of offensive moves and stuff. And I'm, I'm not. It's not a knock on the staff. No, yeah, yeah, it's yeah, just exactly. you get so much more development at that it's next level. It's just, it, and they're like, what? What can the NBA do that the Pike can't? And it's like, it's the NBA, dude. Like, <laughs> yeah. stop. This is a professional sport. Like the level of the sport. It's the next level up. It's like. I don't even know how to compare it. Like a minor league team, even like a single A minor league team is going to be better than Rutgers baseball development at the end of the day. Like that's just yeah. how it works. Like it's just no, you move just, up yeah. and up and up. So just I think I think Cliff leaves as long as he's what a second round pick. I think as long as he's probably going to get drafted, he leaves. Now if he's borderline late second to uh, undrafted, and I think Mike mentioned this, there, there might be a potential for him to like return. Maybe you do like a Caleb McConnell type deal, and it's like, all right, come on, dude, one more year. Like let's do this. So we'll see, but it's going to be interesting. Starting center for the New York Knicks. Right there. That'd be nice. Mitchell Tinsley 2.0. Just more, <laughs> more healthy and more in shape. <laughs> Not Mitchell Tinsley. Jesus, what am I saying? Mitchell Robinson. Oh, you, oh Mitchell Robinson. I was like, what are you, I, I said Mitchell Tin, about it's, it's a Penn State wide receiver, man. My <laughs> fucked up recently. I got I to gotta, like, take a day to recoup and relax. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk a little bit more about basketball recruiting. You were at the Camden Don Bosco game uh, yes. this past weekend, Richie, or I guess it was last Friday. Tell yes. us a little bit about what you saw and what you heard when you were uh, when you were there. Um, just talking to a couple people there. Uh, obviously, uh, the entire Rutgers staff was there watching uh, Dylan Harper, uh, Ron Harper. It was it was kind of funny. I told you guys off off the air about telling on the pod too. So it's like the seats were like. It was Carl Hobbs, TJ, Brandon Knight, and Steve Pike all in a row, and there's, like, no other seats up front. And in comes Ron Harper with, with Plaxico Burris, first off. And I'm just like, <laughs> it's the most random person you could have walked in with. And I was like, yep. okay, like, that's that's something. Um, so what do you call it? Ron Harper walks over, he daps up everybody, hugs hugs Carl Hobbs. So they obviously have a pretty close relationship. And then they just make room, and he just sits in between them the entire game. And so you got to love to see that if you're a Rutgers fan or just – Paul Rutgers recruiting. Um, I, I'm hearing Dylan's. It's it's still like a neck and neck battle. You could you could post all the fucking crystal balls you want, and that's the same guy and same. I, I almost said the word that I've been using too. <laughs> uh, that's the same person. I'm not gonna call him any type of uh, mean word, but uh, the guy's just an idiot. He just he posts all kinds of stupid shit. He uh, he posted that Cliff was gonna go to Arizona State a, week, a month before. Cliff went to Rutgers, and it's like, all right, well, what, what happened there? So now it might be the same case. I think he jumped the gun a bit in terms of making a crystal ball for Dylan. I think it's still neck and neck. I think Rutgers is right there for Dylan. And uh, I, I think they have a really good shot. And Dylan would be the cream uh, of the crop of this 2024 class that already has a 2024 a top 100 point guard. Top 100 player, I should say. Not, not top 100 point guard. He plays point guard, but yeah, you figure the logistics there. So this was – was this like your first time seeing Dylan play live? Uh, yeah. I've seen him on, like, like those Twitch channels and all the streams in AAU. And AAU is a little different, although yeah. AAU is starting to 
trickle into high school basketball, which not a fan of, but it is what it is. Um, but yeah, first time like seeing them in person, I, I dude, I'm extremely impressed. I have a whole paragraph written about like how, how, how good he was. Like it was just, it was imp- extremely impressive. He has not a lot of help on his team. If he had any type yep. of help, if he probably, they probably win that game against the Camden team. What's ranked in what the top 20, top 25 in the country for high school basketball. Mm-hmm. Uh, he locked down DJ Wagner on a couple plays. There was one clip where he crossed DJ and then went to the rim. Um, he's great at finishing, uh, great at driving. He, he, he almost likes the contact. Like it's, 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 not, it's like a completely different game from Ron. Like he'll hit threes occasionally. I think Ron might be the better shooter currently. So if you're, if you're watching this run, go ahead. You can pat yourself on the back <laughs> there. Uh, but I, th- I think Dylan's going to be a phenomenal player. He's he's top ten right now. I think he's number ten for us. I have a feeling. I shouldn't say have a feeling. I've, I've, I'm good um, reconnaissance that I've done that he'll be in the top five momentarily. Whenever our next update is, he's just he's on a different level than these kids, and he, he's going to be such a good player no matter where he goes. He'll be in the league within within a year or two, maybe two, because you get you get to develop a little more. But I, I still think he could be a one and done. He's He's really good. And shout out to uh, Brady Laughlin. That kid lit it up from three in that game and played great defense against like a pretty damn good Camden team. I was very impressed by him in the first half. Yeah, Camden has just like if, if anybody who watched that game uh, on the, they did a great job. First of all, with that broadcast uh, through Showtime, um, <clears throat> they they had a live stream on on YouTube and. Mm-hmm. I got to be honest, the the video quality was better for that than like Big Ten Network. Um, <laughs> it was good. Yeah, so, I was watching on my uh, phone because someone said they're like, uh, I think you mentioned it. You're like, yo, J.R. Smith's on the thing. I'm like, oh, shit, look at that. Yeah, and I was like, J.R. Smith real was, quick. Like, was announcing the game with a guy from South Dakota. So you can imagine how th- there's just like baked in comedy there. Mm-hmm. Um, but Don Bosco was so outsized by Camden. Camden had like, you know, guys coming off the bench for them who were just like these six five freaks, like like one of the best high school football players in the in the state, Jalen Hornsby is like a backup yeah. for them. And he's just wow. like flying in with dunks and like Bradshaw, their center, who's a top five player going to Kentucky, is just like a total freak at center at like six ten. Then you have, obviously have DJ Wagner and there's a bunch of other kids who are going to low majors, but They've got like t- class of 24, 25, 26 kids who are also probably going to end up, you know, top 100 kids in the, in the country. So they just have so much talent at Camden. Yeah. Yeah. They they built, they see, like you said, Richie, it seemed like Camden had a great team. Bosco was more, obviously had more Dylan, but the thing about Dylan was just like, there doesn't seem to be really any holes in his game right now, which is probably the coolest part. I mean, obviously there's more, it's always going to be room to improve, but I mean, that watching him defend, watching it. I mean, we saw at the end there, he had that, was it a block that they called a foul, but I think it really looked, or was it a goaltender? I forget, but it really looked like a, just got there up was, there and blocked it. Like he yeah, defends were, well, he shoots well, he just does, and he, you can see he gets to the rim, he's shifty. It's just like, Everything he does, he just this like so well and so like ahead of like where you a kid his age should be, and it's like, yeah, you can definitely see why people are so high in him, why they think he can mm-hmm. be like the next big thing, and why Rutgers really want why, Rutgers. Like Duke doesn't want him for no reason. Like this kid really has is really something is really something special. So the fact that it's coming now, it looks like between Rutgers and Duke, if Rutgers can land this kid, then like that's a reason to really celebrate and to think that this team could take that. I mean, we're, I mean, it's probably – I think we might be getting a little ahead of ourselves possibly right now talking about a Big Ten championship. I guess we'll see. Who knows? But, I mean, to think that Rutgers could take – the fact that we're even talking about that, that was like it's just a testament to how well, well that's, like, that's they will come. Yeah. And with Dylan, they could just take that next step, I feel like. That's why I want to double down on that a little bit. Like, who would have thought we're talking about Rutgers beating out Duke? Exactly. For a high school, yeah. a high school basketball recruit. Like, it's, it's insane. Dylan – Different level of player. People are like, is he? Is Duke even serious about him? Like, they sent their whole staff to go watch him specifically, mm-hmm. and then Rutgers doubled down and did the same thing. Like, it's just, and then sent Caleb and uh, Quiff were there as well, along with the Riot Squad. Shout out to those guys. Uh, there's there's several. We want Dylan Chance in the middle of the game, and it's just like, oh my god, like <laughs> it's it's funny, man. They they a lot of Rutgers fans uh, scattered too, not just like. Uh, not just in that riot squad section, like just everywhere, like behind me, so like two rows behind me, two rows in front of me, over there, over there, just a ton of red. Rutgers fans showed out for this game, and uh, they got a whole other one coming on too. And uh, what is it, the twenty second? Twenty second, twenty second, twenty second. Yep. And riot squad will be going up to that at Rampo College, and another one for Dylan. And uh, 
I, if, I know it doesn't play a huge role in his recruitment, but just to see that like as a player, like it definitely helps a little bit. Yeah. It's a constant reminder of like, they're not doing that, you know, at the John Wall Invitational. They don't have a, a group of Duke fans coming out to, to watch one guy and to say how much they want this player. Yeah. Um, so we, we've covered a lot on this pod as well. Is there anything else we, we didn't hit on that you wanted to touch on basketball recruiting wise? Uh, Ace Bailey, um, another top records target. Sounds like it's, uh, it's going to be a tough one. I think, uh, Auburn still has the lead there slightly, but Rutgers is pushing there too. And he's a, he's number five currently. Mm -hmm. This is, uh, it's something, it's something to just witness this. They hosted Darian Sutton yesterday. who's a top 120 kid, 127, something like that overall. Uh, I got quotes from him. I'm going to post, uh, he enjoyed his visit. Obviously the game didn't go the way he wanted it. But I know people are like, yeah, on the boards, you know, the game didn't they didn't win, so why would he like the game? And I'm like, it's still you still get that atmosphere, and you still get the you get to see everything, and, and they fought back quite a bit. It's not like the atmosphere is dead. They yeah, they weren't ever leading, which kind of stinks, but they still fought back a hell of a lot, and it was it was fun to watch. It was a good game, a good atmosphere, and uh, that's that's kind of it for recruiting. I mean, I'm sure some other four stars are going to visit next week because that's what's been happening. <laughs> Yeah, it's come out of nowhere, committing or, or visiting. We've had that happen quite a bit, uh, seemingly. Every, it's crazy. Every other game, it seems like there's a four-star from some random place in the country coming to visit for a game. This program's uh, just – every time I think they hit the ceiling, it just – the ceiling keeps growing. And it's just like, yep. oh, shit. Like, like Michael Jordan's yeah, imagine, the floor is the ceiling. Yeah. yeah. Well, the ceiling <laughs> is the roof is what he said. Oh, yeah. 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 Um, <laughs> but yeah, imagine imagine what Pike can do with you know an elite eight run or something like that. Yeah, it's, yeah. he's basically only selling like opening round tournament well, stuff. I'm just so. we're just saying the elite eight this year, Madison Square Garden. Yeah, me and Craig were planning it out for pregame. <laughs> cool. yeah, Sweet this sixteen. One's yeah. This one's yep. this one's drivable. If we make that, they make that, and then they go to the next one, and that one, that one we could drive to too. It's like oh, yeah, yeah. Like, take the flight here, take a rental car, drive over there, and not so bad, yeah. you know. The problem is you have to actually be a decent seed for them to take that in consideration. Otherwise, you're going to get stuck in whatever regional that uh, they want to put you in. So, Jesus. I'll take Albany. That's... Albany is not a, a close drive. It is the closest uh, yeah. first weekend. So hopefully they they, sh they smile upon us for that. Or DC. Um, DC is nice. Actually, DC is an easier drive than, than Albany. Oh, yeah. Honestly, but, yeah. yeah. DC traffic just... Ugh. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks again for with our second pod of the day. So thanks again for, for listening, everyone. Uh, if you haven't already, please give us a five-star review on your favorite podcasting platform. Subscribe. Uh, sign up for the boards if you haven't already. Stay tuned because uh, we have another podcast this week that's I think a lot of you are going to be really interested in. So stay tuned to that as well. But for everybody, this has been another edition of the Night Report Podcast signing off.